In this video, I'll be explaining and demonstrating a couple variations of the femoral nerve glide. So if a patient comes in and has any of the following presentations down here, you should consider giving them a femoral nerve glide. So number one is adverse neurodynamics of the femoral nerve. Now adverse neurodynamics is an umbrella term, it's very general, but if somebody has femoral nerve adverse neurodynamics, then certain positions or movements might reproduce numbness or paresthesia, so tingling, shooting pain, in the femoral nerve distribution of the lower extremity. So over here in this light red color, you see the sensory distribution of the femoral nerve. So if somebody was exhibiting active femoral nerve tension at that time, you might expect those symptoms to be present in this distribution. Okay? Also, sometimes you can have the saphenous nerve involved as well. So the saphenous nerve is the terminal branch of the femoral nerve, and this blue region is the sensory distribution of that. So really anywhere in this blue region, but especially this red region right here, this is where you might expect to see those symptoms. Okay. If somebody has femoral nerve entrapment, that's another indication to do a femoral nerve glide after you've stretched out the quad muscles and the hip flexors. So if we look up here at this picture, we see the psoas major muscle, one of the two iliopsoas, and then over here on the iliac fossa, we have the iliacus. Now, of course, the femoral nerve is going to originate from the lumbar plexus way up uh, above where this picture terminates at the top. But then the femoral nerve is going to form, and it's going to travel really behind the psoas major muscle. Okay? This nerve right here, don't get confused, this is the genitofemoral nerve. So the actual femoral nerve will be behind the psoas major. But then down here in this region that we call the iliopsoas groove, uh, the femoral nerve is going to exit and kind of emerge anteriorly. So it's going to squeeze out in front of the psoas major from in between the psoas major and the iliacus through this iliopsoas groove. And if you have very tight hip flexors, particularly the iliopsoas, and they're spasming, etc., and you put somebody in a position that stretches the iliopsoas, which would be hip extension, then it has the potential to compress this nerve and cause all sorts of symptoms down that distribution in the lower extremity. Numbness, shooting pain, tingling, and even weakness in the quadricep muscles if it's prolonged. Okay, And then other things such as an upper or middle lumbar radiculopathy. Generally, if we're looking at nerve roots L2, L3, sometimes L4, um, those radiculopathies may manifest with the symptoms in the front of the thigh. As you go below that into the lower lumbar spine and even the sacral uh, nerve roots, those are going to be more on the back of the thigh. So if it's upper or middle lumbar radiculopathy, so having the symptoms in the front of the thigh, uh, that's an indication for a femoral nerve glide. And then if somebody has just inflexibility, so they're not able to squat all the way down, like you see right here. Um, some cases it could just be limited dorsiflexion range of motion. It could be quad tightness, but if a person has pain when they're doing this, or they're not even able to get down to that position, and they've got good dorsiflexion range, they've got good knee flexion in the closed chain, their quads really aren't all that tight, well then it could be a femoral nerve problem. So it's definitely worth your while to check that out. So I will now demonstrate a couple variations of the femoral nerve glide. And for the first variation, the patient will be positioned in prone, more specifically prone in the sphinx position, as you see here. So by sphinx position, we're talking about prone and propped on forearms, as you see. And initially, my legs will be flat on the table, and it's okay that my feet are hanging over the edge for comfort. Now, right now, my neck is basically in the neutral position. So to get to position one, I'm gonna allow my neck to bend downward, or forward, I should say, into cervical flexion. So there I'm in cervical flexion, and this is position one. Recall that cervical flexion puts additional tension on the nervous system. Whereas if I were to bring the neck upwards back to neutral, or even into more of an extended position, that would put slack on the nervous system. So this here, cervical flexion, puts tension on the nervous system. Now from here, I'm going to move into position two. I'm going to allow my neck to extend upward at the same time that my hip extends. So this position of cervical extension, at least to neutral, and hip extension, this is position two. 
And because this is a nerve glide, I'm gonna hold for one to two seconds in each position and just oscillate between these two positions. So cervical flexion, hip flexion, cervical extension, hip extension, and just oscillate back and forth. One way to think about it is head down, leg down, head up, leg up, and so on and so forth. Now as the femoral nerve leaves the lumbar plexus, it crosses the anterior hip joint. It goes through the anterior part of the thigh and through the anterior part of the knee. So if we wanted to put additional tension on the femoral nerve, we could just flex the knee because that's gonna elongate the anterior part of the knee. So we can basically do the same nerve glide, but do it with a little bit of knee flexion. So there's position one, and then here's position two. So it's the same thing, cervical flexion, hip flexion, and then cervical extension, hip extension, but it's done with the knee flexed. And so what we're doing here is the same nerve glide, but we're retraining the neurodynamic mobility of that femoral nerve under a larger amount of neural tension. And that larger amount of neural tension is provided by that knee flexion that's done throughout the duration of this nerve glide. Now the second variation of the femoral nerve glide is done in a variation of the supine position. We'll see that variation in just a minute because I'm gonna transition into what's called the modified Thomas position. You'll also notice I have a strap wrapped around my ankle here. You don't have to use that for the stretch, but it is very useful and you'll see why in just a minute. So here I'm in the supine position, but I'm gonna transition into the modified Thomas position, okay? So the modified Thomas position is shown here, where you basically lay diagonally on the table such that you allow one of your thighs to dangle completely off the edge of the table. In this case, that's my left thigh. And I'm basically just letting gravity do what it does naturally. So I get a little bit more hip extension, and then my lower leg is free to dangle down as much as my quads will allow it to, okay? The other leg that's still on the table can be straight, or it can be bent, whatever's most comfortable for the person. Now before I have the person do the nerve glide, I'm always gonna have them do the modified Thomas quad stretch or modified Thomas hip flexor stretch to make sure that the quads in particular are relaxed enough uh, in order to do the nerve glide. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna use this strap to bend my knee into additional flexion. Remember that the rectus femoris, one of the quadricep muscles, which is the most anterior of the quads, is a two joint muscle, crosses the hips and the knees. So by allowing this leg to dangle off the edge, we're putting uh, some hip extension here at the hip joint, that stretches the rectus femoris. And then by pulling on this strap, getting additional knee flexion, we're also stretching the rectus femoris distally. Again, because we're getting some hip extension here, we're also stretching the iliopsoas, but knee flexion has no effect on the iliopsoas because they're only a one joint muscle. So basically, I'm just going to have the patient hold the stretch at least 30 seconds. Usually I'll have them do it a full minute. Again, you can tug further on that strap to get even more knee flexion and a greater stretch of the quads, particularly the rectus femoris. Now, once the patient's quadriceps, in particular the rectus femoris, and then the iliopsoas at the hip joint are relaxed enough, then we will do this femoral nerve glide. So it turns out right here, we're already in position one. So we would be doing a left femoral nerve glide. So the stretch side leg is off the edge of the table and gravity is just doing its job. And my neck is in neutral here. So this is position one. Now to get to position two, I'm going to elevate my head into cervical flexion, and I'm going to kick my knee out into knee extension at the same time. So neck flexion and knee extension. This is position two. And again, being a nerve glide, we're just gonna oscillate between these two positions. So bring the head and leg back down, and then cervical flexion, knee extension over and over again, usually about 15 repetitions, holding one to two seconds in each position. Okay. 
And as always, follow the test, treat, retest model. Thank you for all your support. Be sure to check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff.